this is an extremely serious public health challenge that we're facing. In recent times, it has seemed that we are facing crisis after crisis, but the World Health Organization are extremely clear that climate change is the most serious public health threat facing humanity. There is increasing international alarm at the impact that climate change is having on health, both directly through the impact of heat waves, adverse weather events, floods, but also through the displacement of communities from food and water insecurity, from transmission of infectious diseases, and the mounting pressure on our healthcare systems across the world. The costs of inaction are huge, not just in terms of individual health and well-being and the impact on people's families, but also in terms of the pressure on our health services and the impacts on wider society, including in perpetuating health inequalities as environmental risks are not distributed equally. I'm here to tell you that it's actually worse than you think in terms of the climate crisis. Um, it's not really being given enough air in, in the media and so on. And I think it is a responsibility of us as professionals, whether it's researchers, academics or public health professionals, that we need to understand you know, how bad it is and that we're going completely in the wrong direction in terms of addressing uh, the planetary emergency. So I do think it is about telling the truth, although that may be uncomfortable and quite difficult, particularly the truth as we uh, see based on the most available science. They do detect uh, a strong whiff of climate delay and the more we don't tackle this issue, the more costly it's going to be in you know, finance, but also in, in human lives and, and suffering. If you can get the autonomy, the capability and the capacity and the fun right, if you can get people to focus on the 9 a.m. tomorrow morning question, not what is the perfect thing I should do, not what should I do in 2030, I, I just don't care. What are you gonna do at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning? If we can get, frankly, all of us on this call, everyone uh, across the NHS focusing on that, it's that transition where it's no longer just one healthcare system, it's now 10 healthcare systems, 15 healthcare systems. If you can start to get that critical momentum, that's where this stops becoming just positive, just possible, just something on the side, it starts to become the inevitable future of medicine. probably the role of the public health community, the health community will be the most fundamental now because only the health argument will change the way we are responding to this crisis uh, at the magnitude that we represent with the level of ambition that it deserves. So let's make sure that if we align, if we are positive, if we quantify the health benefits, if we use the health argument, we will be able to motivate a huge change and acceleration and ambition on action against climate change. And therefore, for us as the health community, we will have probably the best ever opportunity to do secondary prevention and primary prevention on a massive scale. Climate action, which keeps the environmental and socioeconomic determinants of health at the front and centre, will help to transform the environment in which we live to one that is healthy, equitable and sustainable. This will ultimately reduce the burden of communicable and non-communicable disease, reducing the strain on our already overwhelmed healthcare providers. The evidence is very clear. We must take urgent action to reach net zero as quickly as possible and to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. This is no easy task, but the health argument for climate action is extremely powerful and our strength lies in our collaboration, north, south, east and west. <laughs>